Hi and welcome to my uh, second video in the Introduction to Phonetics uh, and Introduction to Linguistics course. Now today it's like a, it's going to be like a short video. I'll be talking about uh, about voicing and devoicing and like the voiced and voiceless sounds in languages. Uh, so we were, we are going to stop to start from we uh, from where we stopped last time. So we basically stopped at the voiced and voiceless sounds, like voicing, how voicing happens, how sounds are voiced or devoiced, or how they just become voiceless. Now, everything, like when we try to speak, uh, everything, or like make any sound, everything starts from the lungs. And uh, the air has no qualities when it's like coming from the lungs all the way to the larynx, where everything starts. Now, everything starts in the larynx, where we have the vocal folds, as we saw in the previous video uh, about this course. And so, uh, like, the air comes, like, from the lungs all the way up. When it gets to the larynx, now, here, like, we have the vocal folds. Now, when the vocal folds vibrate or, like, just become wide open, now we start, this is, like, the start of the sound-making process. All right, so... <clears throat> uh, so two cases in the vocal folds. Uh, first one is close and vibrating. Now when the vocal folds are closed, not like fully closed and vibrating, so a little bit of air is coming through the vocal folds, now we have a voice sound. And if the vocal folds are apart, like they're like the, the two folds are wide open and the air is coming, you know, through the larynx, now it's called a voiceless sound. And then everything happens after the larynx, like from the larynx up, then we can have some qualities and features for the sounds. Now here's like a simple uh, illustration that I will um, like teach you and you can make use of it uh, to, <clears throat> to find out if this sound is voiced or voiceless in any language, whether it's English, whether it's it's uh, like Hosa or Zulu or what, like whatsoever. So basically you put your fingers in here, right? So like right on your throat and you try to say any sound, but let's make it like a fricative sound because the, these are like kind of longer sounds. So let's say like the s sound. So like if you just put your fingers here and say the s, right? So you basically feel nothing. It's just like air coming out of the lungs to the larynx, out of the mouth, some obstruction is going on here in the, uh, in the uh, alveolar area. But try to say the other like counterpart voice sound of the s, which is the z. So if you put your fingers again on your throat and say the z sound, now you will feel some vibration. Now this is like the vocal, these are the vocal folds in action. They are vibrating, little bit opened, vibrating, then we have a voice sound. All right. Um, and in, in like in generally in all languages, we have more voice sounds than the voiceless ones. So like the voice sounds are the unmarked uh, sounds in languages. Um, and now, now we talk about like how to transcribe these sounds in, uh, in, in phonemes. Uh, when you see the, a letter between these two uh, closed brackets, that means it is a sound. It is not a letter. So, for example, the V between the brackets, it's actually a V sound. The S between the brackets is like a S sound. And the W is a W sound. So, we call this phonetic transcription. And we have two kinds of phonetic transcriptions. We have the wide and then we have the narrow transcription. We're going to learn about both of them. But usually in linguistics, unless you're documenting a language, unless you're studying a certain phonological feature, um, like uh, you don't need the, the narrow transcription. And let's put in mind that in, in all languages, spelling is not pronunciation. Like, you know, uh, as we know, English is like, you know, a lot of people are learning English and it's like one of the most widespread languages. Uh, spelling, like when you spell a word, you don't pronounce it the same. Some languages though we do, but also there are some phonological features. There are some environments that uh, affect the sounds and how and the way we pronounce these sounds. Now, if you look, for example, the NG is in sing is not like pronounced as, you know, ing is like as ng, which is a nasal sound. We're going to, to learn more about nasals, of course. So yeah, just put in mind that uh, spelling is not pronunciation. And um, we're going to look here 
um, like uh, in this video today at the IPA chart, the International Phonetic Alphabet chart. Now, voicing also depends on the environment of the sound. For example, sometimes we can have um, like a voice sound, but it is in an environment that we have to devoice it. We have to make it voiceless. Now, um, we're going also to learn about this more in phonology because this is uh, like this is phonology basically how how phonology how the arrangement of sounds um, affects the way we pronounce them and we voice them or devoice them. Now, also the the voicing is the only feature that makes two sound distinct. Like this is very important because you know um, now if you look at this and the z, if you look at the p and the b, these sounds are like almost similar, like in the way we pronounce them, in the way we make them, in the, like in terms of where we put our tongue, what kind of, uh, you know, what, what part of the organs of speech is involved in making this sound, but there is only one difference, which is the voicing and devoicing. So if you try to say the s or z, you put your tongue in the same place, you do the same thing, except for the vibrating. In the s, there is no vibration, in the z, we have vibration. And um, in languages, sounds can be categorized into consonants and vowels. And for consonants, we write them like for, 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 the, for the sake of easiness. We put it as C, vowels as V. And this is something very basic. This is something very easy. And um, I, I think everyone who studies English and, you know, and linguistics and, you know, know, the, know, know these things. Here is the International Phonetic Alphabet. This is the IPA. Now, if you are a linguist, this is like, let's say, this is like your, your, your gun. You have to carry it with you all the time, especially if you're a phonetician. And this IPA chart is basically only for the English language. Now, if you look at the IPA chart here, so we have these symbols. These are all sounds, right? And, you know, here we have, <clears throat> it, it tells us whether the sound is voiceless or voiced. And here we have the manner of articulation, like how the articulation, how the production of the sound uh, is happening. And here we have the like kind of a broader categories for the sounds. We're also going to talk about them in phonology. And here we have the place, the place of articulation, like where the sound is, is exactly made in the, in the mouth or in the vocal tract. Now, these symbols, you may be familiar with some of them, you may not be familiar with the others, but like if you look at like this is the p sound and we make it with the lips and it's a stop because the air is completely stopping when we say it like p, right? Uh, this is like the counterpart of this, which is the voice version of p, it's b. And this is like the alveolar t, d, the velar, like in the back of the of the of the mouth, like with the tongue, with the root of the tongue touching the soft palate. This is velar, and this is the glottal stop. Like you know when you say the word button or uh oh, right, like right in the middle of the word uh oh. So this is uh, the uh, glottal stop. And here we have the fricatives, like you know fricatives, like we have um, like like the, the the more kind of sounds in English we have are the fricatives. We have the f, v, th, th, s, z, sh, j, and the uh, this is a glottal sound also. And then we have the affricates. We only have two affricates in English. We have the ch and j. And then we have nasals. Like basically they are nasals because the air is not coming out of the mouth. It's coming out of the nose. That's uh, because the, the soft, like the, the velum is lowered. And so the air escapes through the nose, not the mouth. So we have the m, n, and n. Uh, this is a lateral. It's a lateral because the air basically escapes from the sides of the tongue. And if you... If you want to know exactly how the L sound is made, just put your tongue behind your teeth on the alveolar ridge and breathe in. You feel like the sides of your tongue are cold. So that's because the air is coming inside your lungs from, from these two sides. So when we say the L sound, the air is escaping from the sides. That's why we call it a lateral. And then, then we have the rhotic, the, the R. So basically, look, we have two versions. This is the upside down R. This is the regular R. So this is the R. R, R. It's kind of, it exists in British English, but this is like more American, the one in uh, in parentheses, this is like the American R, R. And so like that's a retroflex sound. And it's also like, it's a, it's a liquid sound. And here we have the glides. The glides are very close to the vowels. Like we have the W, 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 and then we have the Y. You basically keep your tongue very close to your heart palate like this, like this is your heart, this is your tongue. And like Y, Y like this. And this, this is the, the hua, hua. Um, and this is like sometimes it's optional. Sometimes people use it, sometimes they don't use it in English. It's, it's not there all the time. Depends on the accent, depends on the region where English is, is spoken. 
Now we're going to stop here at the consonants and um, so in my next video hopefully I will talk about consonants, how they how they are made um, and where they're made and, and like their qualities and their features and the vowels. I will also show you a website where you can have access to the sounds of all the languages to like and to, to, the, to the signs and to the diacritics that we use when we want to do a narrow transcription and hopefully that I hope that I will also be able to provide you with some exercises and drills about phonetic transcription so you can become experts in phonetic transcriptions. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and um, please make sure that you look for kind of more resources on phonetics because phonetics is like, you know, it's a, it's a very big uh, branch of linguistics. But like, and this is, remember, this is only an introduction. Uh, all right, so keep looking for resources. You can ask me if you need any kind of resources about phonetics. And hopefully, in um, again, in the next video, we're going to talk about consonants and vowels and the international sounds, the, the, the IPA of all languages with a, with a cool website that I will be providing you with. All right, so I, I wish you have a great day and I'll see you in my next video.